Jungle is a place full of danger, both in Terraria and in the real world. Now I must mention I did review the jungle biome, but there are some things about it I did not mention previously, which is what we will talk about in this video. This is one of the largest biomes and aspects of gameplay of all of Terraria. You can fight three bosses here, these being Plantera, the Golem, and the Queen Bee in pre-hard mode. The Queen Bee is in pre-hard mode. I will be focusing a lot on these bosses for this video and their items, but also the jungle and ivy chests as well, including the jungle mimic at the end. Thank you for 100 likes on my last video, that is a great milestone. So in return, here is a part 2 of reviewing the jungle biome. Let's start by talking about a mini biome, the beehives. A mini biome first is like a biome within a biome. There are other types of mini biomes that exist as well. The entire place is made of hive, which is a special type of block with hazardous characteristics to it. If mined, the block will expel bees, honey, or both. To craft a bee block, you can obtain beehives by shaking a jungle tree, which will drop the whole item instead of causing bees to spawn. Once obtained with a heavy workbench, you can convert it into the hive substance, but it will still have the same properties as mentioned before, so be careful. Honey itself is an extremely abundant source in beehives and is very valuable when fighting bosses, not just the queen bee. It's also slower than lava, it flows very slowly and is one of three liquids in the game in the vanilla gameplay. Honey can be collected in a bottle or you can get submerged in it. While it will slow your player, it will also have health regen effect. If you do leave the pool of honey, you will have a 30 additional seconds of regeneration. Now to mention the boss you will find here is none other than the queen bee. Well, actually not on first entering, and you can fight this boss several times. She will be summoned only if you destroy a larva or have an abomination. There will be multiple beehives in your world that you can enter. Either of these ways can summon a boss, whether through the summon item or by destroying the larva. I would probably say that the Queen Bee is more difficult than the Eye of Cthulhu, but easier than Skeletron. So fighting this boss in between can be pretty helpful, but can pose somewhat of a challenge. This boss is not required for game progression, but still has a very valuable items that you can use to defeat your enemies with. Once defeated, the boss will always drop and have a 33% chance for your player to always get one of three weapons in every fight. The bee gun is a magic weapon that will shoot a swarm of bees at the intended target and they will fly off screen afterwards. The beekeeper, not to be confused with the job, is a melee weapon sword that has a 90% chance of inflicting the confused debuff which can revert the direction in which enemies move once it hits an enemy. It has a very fast speed, and while not the strongest sword, it's actually one of the swords necessary in order to craft the Zenith. The Bee's Knees is a ranged weapon that converts arrows into beasts that swarm an enemy. By the way, it's a name that is named after a cocktail with honey in it. Anyways, once you enter hard mode, the next boss you can fight is Plantera. Some really good juicy items are in this package with this boss, but first I should mention how to summon the boss. First off, you have to find a Plantera bulb. Pretty easy, they will spawn after you defeat all of the mechanical bosses. And I should also probably mention how this boss works in general, because it does have some interesting mechanics. During the progression, because this is post-mechanical bosses, this boss is actually pretty difficult, even in terms of classic mode. Plantera uses arms and tendril vines to crawl around in the underground jungle. In her first form, she is much slower and shoots seed projectiles at the player with some variance. Once her health is brought down to half, she will change into her second form, where she is much faster. While she no longer shoots projectiles, the teeth inflict much more damage, and she now has a 10 plus defense, and harder difficulties this boss is grueling, and much much faster, and I, and it, 
I seriously mean that. This will require for you to strategize much more. Things that will help you defeat this boss are technical aspects such as building an arena with any platform, so clearing out a lot of the blocks. I know that can be tedious, but if you want to have an open space where you can move around quickly, I think this will be necessary. Also having campfires, greater healing potions, heart lanterns, and honey, like we mentioned earlier, or any regenerative items in your inventory. Anything that will give you boosted defense or life will be very important for Plantera. Now for the drops. I will mention a few, but major ones, because there are many of them. I talk about why the axe is a guitar and why Plantera has the name it does in a short video, so I'll leave a link to that in my description of this video. Anyway, you have a chance to get a weapon in each class. To note, there will always be a 100% drop of the jungle key, which will get you into the jungle temple. If you're trying to grind for this boss, you're probably going to get lots of jungle keys as well. The Seedler is a jungle themed sword that shoots Seedler nuts at an enemy that kind of looks like coffee beans and does 50 damage. While the Pygmy Staff is a summoning item, it summons a creature called the Pygmy, which will throw a spear and inflict the Acid Venom debuff onto your enemies. The Nettle Burst is a magic weapon that shoots a branch of thorns in a linear direction. It has a length up to 24 tiles, which is, while it does 35 damage and 25 damage on the 3DS, it will repeat the damage very quickly so it damages the enemy quickly once they are struck. So don't be confused by the low damage for pre-hard mode. Sometimes they don't always accurately represent the item. The Venus Magnum is better, well, the Venus Magnum is a better version of the Uzi with overall better stats and uses musket balls and silver, tungsten, bullets, etc. as well as others that, you know, will do the same function. It doesn't modify them like some guns do. Here's a list of all the things that drop. Overall, Plantera has some of the best items for boss progression. The boss you will fight after Plantera resides in the Lizard Temple. The big, blocky, pixelated brick himself, the Golem. Now I did mention the temple and historical facts and influences on the temple, but I didn't really mention much of the game aspect of the Golem besides a little bit of his design. Some of the attack patterns of the Golem is he shoots fireballs out of his mouth with his chain fists and don't let him stomp on you because he will do a lot of damage and it will kill you too. He acts sort of like a giant moving humanoid booby trap, so be careful. Of the several projectiles in his second phase, he is much faster because the head detaches from the body and like the wall of flesh will shoot projectiles that get faster the lower the health bar goes down so the be careful about the lasers it, it's very similar in the mechanics anyways because i talked a lot about the jungle temple and some of the golem in the last video i will just talk more about some of the items the golem drops because there is also a ton of good stuff here besides the beetle husk of course which has a chance of dropping and i did talk about that everything else to this boss can be a bit grindy and the beetle husk is actually the only item that does drop every single time you know but to have all of the ancient lizard brick stone themed to them the pigsaw is is the best pickaxe in the game minus the alien laser drill but I guess that's not really a pickaxe it cannot be crafted and has 210% pickaxe bar I think it's 210% which means it can mine just about all the blocks in the entire game including the lizard brick the possessed hatchet is one of the best weapons in the whole game and one of the best boomerangs as well. It has a very fast speed and has a 1 in 7 chance or 14% drop chance or 12.5 and 1 8th on the 3DS. The Staff of Earth is a magic weapon and literally shoots basketball looking boulders at your enemy. It bounces around very quickly and has a slow usage time but does 125 damage. The Golem Fist is a flail similar to the KO Cannon but has an extremely fast speed and does 90 damage. Other than that, there aren't really any melee weapons that drop from the Golem, like a sword or anything like that with direct melee hit. Besides fighting bosses, there are even more interesting loot that you can collect. You can find these little structures that contain jungle-themed chests 
with jungle themed items as well. These are called the ivy chests. There are seven primary items that can be obtained. For pre-hard mode, all of these items you can get have a chance of you being able to actually get them. Well, it's actually varied, so some of the items are more prevalent than others, just to let you know. The Feral Claws are useful for speeding things up when it comes to mining. If you are impatient, it has a 12% increase in mining speed for all pickaxes. Anklet of the Wild increases movement speed by 10%. Staff of Regrowth is a nice tool that can grow back grass on dirt blocks instantly, but uses mana. The Boomstick is a ranged weapon. It is similar to the quad barrel shotgun, but shoots in a less spread out area and is more focused in the center, and you can see for yourself. The Flower Boots are an unusual accessory to say the least. When the user wears them, a trail of flowers will begin to rapidly grow on jungle, hollowed, and ash grass. A fiberglass fishing pole is a fishing pole variant, that's pretty much it. The last item of the primary items is seaweed, which has only a 2% chance of it appearing, so it is pretty rare. But you can get a cute turtle pet from it, so I guess that's a plus. Anyways, I should mention that there are six biome chests for each biome. There is one chest, but there's five for each world because there's two evils and you can't have both evils in the world. So it can vary between the corruption or crimson themed chest. In each chest, there is one item as well. For the jungle biome, you need to obtain the jungle key. Once obtained, you can find and unlock the jungle chest the item you can get is the piranha gun, which will shoot three mechanical piranhas. Sounds like it would hurt a lot, like regular wouldn't hurt enough. Anyways, for the last part of this video, I'd like to mention one creature that exists within the game's code, however, isn't supposed to be fought with in normal gameplay. It only drops joke items, and I will display a list here. Like, I don't know, 69 Party Girl Bathwater, for whatever reason. Fart in a Jar. Master Bates. I think you get the point. Nothing truly useful, but just, you know, ridiculous. This was intentional, although personally I think if this was an actual creature that could be fought. I think especially for the jungle part of the gameplay, it could definitely be useful. Having one or, you know, two of these around with its own unique jungle themed items. Although I can see why they removed these because there's already so many jungle themed items. And there's already the jungle chest and ivy chest and, well, yeah, pretty much. Anyways, to sum things up, thank you everyone for this video reaching its goal. 100 likes for a video for me is pretty outstanding. We've been able to reach that goal uh, more and more often, which is pretty incredible. I will note in the last video, some people were not happy that I gave an unintentionally misleading title. I do apologize for giving the wrong context to the video, so I strayed away and kept more loyal for the game's wiki for this one because that i hope everyone enjoyed the video more the next video will be out in about a weekish but i've been working on some big big stuff that you guys can expect for right now it's a secret but you guys will know eventually so i hope everyone has a good rest of your day like i said and i will see you all in the next video see ya